I said, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, it's so good to see each and every one of you this morning. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you enjoyed family, those of you that are uh, traveling and wherever you are today. We just thank God because this is the day again that the Lord has made. Come on, I need you to put your hands together. Those of you that are joining us, happy holidays to you. I'm so glad to see you there on the screen. For those of you that are in the house, come on, we already know what to do. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord great? Isn't his name wonderful? Hallelujah, we serve a true and living God. I need everybody to clap your hands. Come on. Let's worship him together. Let's praise him together. Yes, Lord. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. power in the name of Jesus so much power in your name everyone say there is power, there is power in the name of Jesus so much power in, power in your name come on lift it up there is power there is power in the name of Jesus so much power in
than enough, I need you to lift your hands and just begin to dwell in that. You are giant. Hallelujah. Oh God. And I will be content in every circumstance. You are giant. Come on, say it. You are enough. And I will be I will be content Every circumstance, In every circumstance, you are child. Hello everybody, my name is Sean Saunders and I want to welcome you to Agape. Whether you are viewing us online or you are participating in the live worship experience, I want to tell you what Dr. Powell always tells us. There is indeed nothing like a live Agape worship experience. And we're so glad that you're here that we have a special gift for you. So if this is your first time, can you text first time to 797979 and we will send you an e-gift from our hearts to yours. And if you've been visiting for some time, we haven't forgotten about you. We want you to invite others to worship with us. And you can do that by tagging Agape Rawway or following or liking whichever platform you are viewing us from. If you're in person, take a picture in exchange of our hug time. Greet someone from afar and let them know you're so glad that they're in the building or in the chat. We love you. Now let's get back to our worship experience. Hallelujah. Come on. Like he said, this is our part of our service where we love on one another. If you want to take a picture in your aisle, you can do that. Fist pump, air five. Just show love towards one another. Those of you that are joining us, come on, let's get in on this praise experience. Who has the final say? Jehovah has come on. the final say. Tell me who. Say it loud. The Lord is. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Anybody declare that this morning? Come on, say I have. I have no Hey! 
great day at Agape. I'm GL Douglas and here's a list of our upcoming events. First off, I want to say I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas celebrating with friends and family and that your hearts were merry. And I hope everyone had a chance to check out Christmas at the Point. It was nothing short of amazing. Give it up for Lauren, Azamar, and the Performing Arts Ministry. They did an amazing job. Yes, clap it up for them. And I want to take a minute to say a special shout out to Pastor B Love for doing the editing and bringing the vision together. And I know y'all saw a pastor made his cameo appearance. He was sharp. <laughs> Listen, if you want to end the year off with Agape, December 31st, we are having service, one service only at 10 p.m. right here at Agape, as well as online. So listen, December 31st, we are going to end 2021 with a bang. Make sure you are here, either while in person or online. You're not going to want to miss it. Well, Agape, thank you for watching. Please make note of all the wonderful things happening right here at Agape, even virtually, as we continue to do things the Jesus way. Amen. Good morning. Good Sunday morning. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. 
I hope you had a great weekend, a great Christmas day, and uh, here it is, December the 26th. Can you believe it's almost the end of 2021? This is the last week of 2021. Wow, it just kind of flew by. Uh, Listen, um, we have a memorial service for Brother Willie Workman that will take place here on Wednesday, the 29th, at... Dr. O, what time? 11, 12, 12 noon, 12 noon. Uh, he served on our greeters ministry, he passed away uh, about two months ago, I believe, or so while uh, away. And uh, he's going to be memorialized here on this Wednesday. And if you can attend, um, by all means, we invite you to come and be a part of the memorial service. Uh, that's sad news. It's bittersweet, of course, uh, but we know for the believer to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we rejoice in the God of our salvation, even time in times of sorrow. I've got some good news, though, today, this morning. We got our dear mother, Millicent, who is in the room today. Would you stand, dear? She has relocated. Uh, and Madeline, that's, that's Madeline with her, right? That's her daughter. This is Madeline. Would you stand as well? This is uh, S- Sister Millicent, and uh, I'm not going to say her age because I think I got in trouble last time, but she just, got a, she just got a year older, and you look wonderful. We miss you so very much. And I spoke with her recently on her birthday, and uh, she misses us a whole lot too, but she stays in touch, stays online, stays connected, and she told me about this visit, and I'm so glad to see you. You look wonderful. And- my mother came to church today, too, so both, both of y'all can just, golden girls, <laughs> the saintly golden girls, amen, 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 amen. Uh, it's time to worship the Lord in giving, amen, amen, it's time to worship the Lord in giving. Let's say this again, I have no reason to fear. I, 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 I can tell with uh, our our crowd today and even last week that Omicron has got a lot of people fearful. And we do understand the, um, uh, the, the numbers are, are, are very high. And um, we have to be mindful of these things. I'm grateful for those of you who, even though you didn't make it, maybe felt nervous about being here, ain't throwing you no shade. Uh, I did see some of you at the mall on this week, though. Uh, and there were more people at the mall than, than, than here. Uh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But um, do be careful. Uh, do be mindful of, of your surroundings um, there. Um, fortunately, what we're hearing is that with the Omicron uh, variant, that those have been vaccinated are really, if they're having breakthrough uh, infections, they're, they're mild. And let me say this as well. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor, but I do listen. I try to listen and, and hear both sides or the several sides of, uh, uh, of, of the story as it's in evolving. Um, but um, keep this in mind. I've never had a flu shot, um, but I'm told even before uh, the vaccinations um, began for COVID-19 that even though you get the flu shot, it doesn't guarantee you not getting the flu. It's just you'll not, most likely not get a severe, as severe a case of the flu if you're not vaccinated. And it's pretty much the same science with COVID-19. We've heard about some of our national leaders that have had breakthrough cases, but thank God, mild, and they've recovered. And so um, I'm encouraging you, if you haven't been vaccinated, and I know there's some disparity, I can't make you do what you don't want to do, but please, um, before you just make a decision based upon what you might be uh, feeling or hearing from particular news networks, Um, please, I want you to live and not die to declare the wonderful works of the Lord. And um, one thing that I've said, and interestingly enough, our former president, uh, somebody said, your former president, (laughs) I I got you. Our former president um, recently and finally said something uh, to, um, in support of vaccination, I just was thinking, well, my God, I don't understand those who were uh, great supporters of the former administration while there's so much um, challenge, there's so much um, 
uh, discussion um, and protest against the vaccines because this is the president that wanted the vaccine to be named after himself. Warp speed, and he wanted, that was the suggestion. Um, but I'm glad that he's, he's indeed, you know, said something uh, to help at least calm the, calm the waters somewhat because there's a lot of disparity that's going on. And right now we have over 800,000 people in the United States of America who have died um, because of COVID-19. This number needs to stop. We need to do what we need to do to protect one another. Hello, somebody. Amen. And so even with that in mind, we've decided just to do one um, New Year's Eve service. We're asking that you do check in beforehand. And if you're not going to come, please, in person that is, please join us online. And um, let's, let's just kind of keep in touch with social media in case there are any changes. We'll post our information there and instructions there for you on social media. It's time to worship the Lord in giving. I want to cons- I want to uh, direct your attention to Proverbs chapter 11. And there's a verse, verse 25, that I wish to share with you this morning. And it's there on the screen. The generous soul shall be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Uh, the person who waters will be watered. King James Version puts it this way, the generous soul shall be made fat. And when we hear fat, we like, well, hey, I ain't looking for fat. But fat is a word that represents abundance, riches. Um, there are those who, 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 who scatter uh, but then receive more. Then there are those who hold on with clenched fists to what they have and it leads to poverty but the generous soul shall be prosperous one translation says shall succeed and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed those who help others out will be helped out themselves those who do good things will receive good things This is not the words of Lawrence Powell. These are the words of the Lord. And let us, by faith and as an act of worship, honor the Lord being generous. One translation uses the word liberal. The liberal soul shall be be made fat. It is at this point of seed time that you determine harvest. If you sow generously, you'll reap generously. However, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap, but sparingly. I just believe everyone here wants to experience God's best, God's prosperity, and uh, it's really in your hands. He's already given to you seed. Now sow the seed purposefully, generously, and cheerfully. Greek word is the word from which we get our English word, hilarious. But it's beyond just having a good laugh as you're giving. It has to do with being willing, being prompt to do it. Nobody has to twist your arm. You're eager and ready to be a part of this ministry of giving. Your giving supports the work of the Lord. It it advances the cause of Christ and the cause of the kingdom of God. It helps us as a church, as a ministry, to do what we do. And not only touching our immediate community and region, but it allows us to even uh, uh, touch the nations of the world. We're grateful for the opportunity to be streaming live every Sunday and every Wednesday. And to all of our international guests, wherever in the world you may be, thank you for joining us today. We are grateful that we have this connection, even though we can't be together in person, but we have this virtual platform. Thank you so very much. Giving instructions are right there on the screen. You have a number of ways that you can give electronically, and I realize some of you are still sending check or cash and we appreciate that as well if you are doing so today in person then hang on to that envelope until the conclusion of the service in which we'll give you opportunity to sow seed listen before i uh exit right here uh, i will be back with a word from the lord but i i know you already gave them uh accolades and and uh, appreciated uh the, the the work the incredible work the creative work um the the labor that was put into Christmas at the Point. Did you enjoy Christmas at the Point? How about it? Put it in the comment section if you did. 
I've listened to it like three times already, and I plan on listening to it again. It just blesses me so much when I look at it, and I know the love and the labor that went into it. We have some of the most creative people here in our church family, and I give thanks to each and every one of them. Amen. I'm going to exit, but I'll be right, well, not really exit, I'm just going over there, and uh, I'll be right back. If you haven't already shared the link, let somebody know that Agape's on, and I have a word from the Lord for you. you too. Amen. The song says, Jesus will know that whatever you need, Jesus will bring it to pass. Come on, put those hands together.
I believe God. How about you? That's an, that's an encouragement for somebody today. I know that he will. For some, it's not a question of his ability, but of his willingness. I want you to know that he is able and he is willing. I just believe it. I just believe I got a witness in the house as well. Sometimes your back is up against the wall. You have nowhere to go. I promise you that God will not disappoint you. For the Bible says, hope maketh not a shame. That's King James Version. In other words, hope does not disappoint your hope in Christ. He will make all things work together. As I say often, even the things that work against you, he'll make them work for you and for his glory. I just dare you right now, I just dare you, just free up your hands if, if, you, if you need to, but I just dare you to give him some glory because of his willingness. Come on, his willingness, come on, come on. Come on, come on, that's it, that's it, that's it. To the willing God, to the able God. Come on, that's it, that's it, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus will, Jesus will. Jesus can and Jesus will. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, you came here this morning not to look at me. Come on, not to look at us. Come on, but to look to Jesus. He's the God of all flesh. There's nothing too hard for him. He is capable. He will, he will, he will, he will. yes he will come through for you oh yes he will he will he will deliver he said call unto me in the day of trouble he says and I will deliver you and you will glorify me based upon those words I know that well there's going to be some days when trouble shows up but in that day at that time all I have to do is look to the Lord all I need to do, all you need to do is call unto him. Help me, Jesus. Deliver me, Jesus. I need victory, Lord. And he said, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to give you victory. I'm going to cause you to triumph. I'm going to make ways out of no ways. I'm going to defy the odds. I'm going to bless you in spite of. And he said, you're going to be so blessed that you're going to glorify me. And I like, to, I like to glorify God in advance. How about you? Pay it forward. Just thank you. Praise it forward, rather. And thank you, Lord. And praise you, Lord. And glorify you. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Look at somebody and say, Jesus will. Oh, please. Come on. Point at somebody else and say, Jesus will. Well, I feel Jesus. I feel him in the room. I tell you, I tell you, he's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. I feel, see, whenever you start boasting in him, when you start speaking well of him, when you start declaring your faith in him, I mean, he says, he takes it as, 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 as an opportunity to come in, in and show himself strong on your behalf. See, the devil doesn't want you to praise the Lord. He doesn't want you to have faith in him. He doesn't want you to believe God for what it, what it is that's in your heart to believe God for. And so you and I have this opportunity uh, to shut the devil's mouth and even praise the Lord in spite of. Even though what you're believing him for hasn't yet been manifest or yet realized, you just know that God will, that God's going to come through, that God's going to do what he said, that he's not a man that he should lie, that if he said it, it's coming to pass. And therefore, we just bless you, Lord. We just glorify you. Come on, not just in this house, but in your house, wherever you are. We just bless you. We appreciate you. The God of miracles, the God of our salvation, the God of healing, the God of 
deliverance. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's take our seed now and lift it up before the Lord with a smile on your face. Our Father, from your hand, we receive this seed that we are delighted now to sow back into your hand. And we thank you for being our source, the one that provides for us all of our needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for what you designed, what you set up as a system to bless your people, that you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. We thank you for the opportunity now to advance the cause of Christ, the kingdom of God. And I thank you, Father, for these who are willing of heart and who give to you of the Lord's tithe and the offerings above and beyond. And I thank you for the miracle of transformation, for taking each seed sown and causing a multiplied harvest to come into the lives of all of these. I thank you, Father, and it is so in Jesus' name. And let us say amen. 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 I want you to just put your, your devices down for a moment. And if you truly believe that God has received your seed, and if you believe in the miracle of harvest and uh, the, the, the principle of reciprocity, give and you shall receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, it shall be given to you. I want you to thank God in advance. A high praise. A high praise. Come on, thank God in advance. Hallelujah. 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 I think, tw I just believe 2022 is going to be a better year financially even for you. Oh, come on, let, let me hear some faith in the room. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild. Life, hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing. Glory, glory, glory to the new born. It's not a soul. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Oh, what a wonderful child. Come on, let me hear you, even with your mask Jesus, on. Jesus, 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 so holy. didn't sing a Christmas song today, so I figured I need to do so because it's December 26th. Um, so um, I don't I don't want it to be a solo or a performance. I, I, I want you to join in. I know you got your mask on, but I want you to just sing about this Lord. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. Goodwill toward men. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Come on, let's sing it. Jesus. 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 Oh, what a wonderful oh, child. Oh, what a wonderful child. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. 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 So holy.
Savior, so holy beacon man, new light, new hope to all. because I surely didn't know those words. I didn't, and the ones you added, it just really worked. Amen. Thank God for the anointing of improvisation. You just come on with it here. As long as you know the medley, just sing some words. He's just doing a Sandy. That's what he's doing. Amen. He's doing a Sandy. I mean, Sandy, because God knows. Though, you may not know this, but Sandy... Sandy can put a word up in there, and you just thought it was a part of the song, and she can do it without skipping a beat. Hey, Amen. I appreciate you all so very, very, very much. Hey, amen, hey, amen, hey, amen. Let's give it up for this amazing team behind me as well, because that wasn't rehearsed. Hey, amen, hey, amen, hey, amen. All right, I got a word from the Lord for you today, and I am going to do my best to share it. And... Uh, and uh, just a, a, li a little bit of time, you know, preachers say that. I think they mean it, most of them. Uh, um, but it is my desire to share um, a word that I have been meditating on, praying about. Um, always want to share a word in season for you. And I'd like you to join me or, or share a word of, in season with you. I'd like you to join me in the book of Luke, New Testament book of Luke chapter 8. And we're going to um, read a few verses here, verses 22 through 25. And just before we do so, our Father, our hearts are open to receive from you. I am nothing without you. I can do nothing without you. I am what I am by the grace of God. 
Empower me, I pray this day, to speak words of life, to encourage, to strengthen, to enrich uh, these who are here today. Thank you, Father, for this good ground that will not sow a seed in bad ground, but good ground. And therefore, there will be a harvest that abounds and remains fruitfulness as a, as a result of our being together today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. All right, verse 22 of Luke chapter 8. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. And he, that's Jesus, of course, uh, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake and they, were, and, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we're perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased and there was a calm. But he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Let's say amen to the reading of God's word. You can find a, a record, and, and, I'm, and I'll refer, reference uh, Mark's version of the uh, events in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. If you're taking notes, you can just jot that down. Um, and Jesus, after awaking, awakening and rebuking the wind and the sea, he looks at his disciples. He says to them, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Uh, before you take your seat, would you just look at someone and ask them that same question? Where is your faith? You may be seated. That's the title of today's message, Where is Your Faith? And I pray that this message will encourage you and strengthen your faith. I really believe that this is a right now word from the Lord, a rhema word from the Lord. And so please open up your spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit does say to us today. Let's not make the mistake of thinking of others who need to hear it and dismissing the fact that this is a word that we need to hear. There's always room for improvement. Your faith may be strong, but I just believe it can be stronger. Mm -hmm. So let us consider the text. The story begins. The story um, begins here as far as the message goes, but the events connected to the story really take place prior to this scene. After a time of ministering, uh, Jesus preaching, teaching, proclaiming the kingdom of God, ministering healing to those who are in need, bringing about deliverance, miracles, Jesus says to his disciples, let's get into this boat and let us cross over to the other side. Let us get in the boat and let's take a trip to the other side. Let us go over to the other side. That is a very significant statement uh, for a significant part of the story and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pick it up a little bit more so in, in just a few minutes. But Jesus gets into a boat. Imagine. He's in getting into a boat with his disciples. He says to his disciples, his followers, his students, he says, let us go over to the other side. And so they began to sail. And the Bible says that Jesus fell asleep. Jesus falls asleep. Remember that he is the son of God, but he also is called son of man. So he is divinity and he is God. Or, and he is man, divinity, God, man, human, son of God, son of man. Uh, he is 100% God, and then in his flesh, he's 
man. Therefore, after all ministry in this flesh, Jesus had to sleep. Sometimes you need to sleep. You need to rest. A week ago, yeah, a week ago when I was away, I took a nap. My God, do y'all remember naps? Do you remember being a child and didn't want to take a nap? It was nap time and you started crying. Man, I had a nap. And I can't do the power nap. I can't do the 20-minute thing. I got to have like an hour and a half, two hours. It was like a two-hour nap. I woke up. I felt so refreshed. I felt like, oh, and I didn't even feel guilty. I was like, this is like really nice, a nap. I can't wait to do it again. When you're ministering, when you're working, life itself <laughs> requires an expense of energy and you need to take it down to rest and refresh. Those of you who have such busy schedules, I encourage you to please make certain that you include rest time. Get your rest. So Jesus fell asleep. The other disciples are awake. But Jesus, the one who said, let us get in the boat, let us go over to the other side, while they were en route, decides to take advantage of the time and get some shut-eye. There he is, sleeping. I imagine Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was a quiet sleeper. Somehow or another, I can't imagine Jesus snoring. Perhaps he did, but he's at rest. He's in a good place. All of a sudden, as the story goes, they encounter stormy weather. Anybody know anything about stormy weather? Uh, 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 stormy weather. All of a sudden, a windstorm comes out of nowhere. Storms are a fact of life. Whether you agree with that statement or not, that's on you, but storms are common. They happen all the time, and they happen everywhere. Such is the nature of storms, naturally speaking, and spiritually so as well. Sometimes, as in the case of the text, storms seem to come out of nowhere. Just think for a moment. You had smooth sailing. Oh, things were wonderful. Life was good. Oh, my God, you, you had no, no complaints to discuss. It's just wonderful when all of a sudden, without notice, because you didn't have a weatherman or a weatherwoman, a, me a meteorologist to tell you, hey, hey, here comes a storm. You need to prepare for it. You are blindsided. You are taken by surprise by a storm. Some storms are storms related to your health. Some are about relationships marriage and family. Some have to do with your job or your business. Storms are commonplace. I've discovered that not all storms are the same. Some are small storms, while others are massive. Some last for just a few minutes, and then some last for hours. You know, anybody here who's ever been to Florida, you know that it might rain. I mean, it might pour like seemingly out of nowhere. Boom. Here comes all of this rain. But just hang on. Hold tight for a moment. Five minutes later, the sun will be out. And shortly thereafter, it, will only, it won't even look like it's going to rain. A few years ago, I had one of the brothers with me down in um, Florida for a time of ministry. And if you uh, know me, you know that I, I appreciate a good laugh, right? You obviously don't know me. I, I think that laughter is good. Uh, Mary Hart does good like medicine. 
And uh, this was this individual's first uh, trip. We were in Orlando, and I was ministering there for a conference. And um, this was several years ago. And so uh, I, I was telling him about the Golden Corral. Yeah, the Golden Corral. The Golden Corral, the Buffett Restaurant. Buffet. Y'all slow today. Uh, I, I got him really excited because he appreciated a good meal. And, you know, Golden Corral up in New Jersey and Golden Corral in the South is not the same in my opinion, you know, because they got them Southern cookers about, about around, like, North Carolina and in, in, in south of there. It's just got a different vibe. It's just got a different vibe. Whoever's in that chick kitchen, they adding a little something that these northerners are not doing, right? So I got them really excited about the Golden Corral. So we get to the Golden Corral, and just as we're approaching, it just begins to rain. I mean, it is pouring. So I said to him, hey, don't worry about it, man. We're hungry too, by the way. I left that part out like we are really hungry. And I said, don't even worry about it. I said, this rain is going to stop shortly, I promise you. So we sit in the car, and we're sitting, and wow, it's like 10 minutes, and it's still raining. So he was like, I don't mind getting a little wet. I was like, me either. So we ran into the restaurant, and we ate, and it's still pouring. I mean, it's pouring. It's thunder and lightning. It's really pouring. And we've been in here, and we've had not just one helping, but two and three helpings, yeast rolls and fried chicken. Glory be to God. Now it's time to leave, and it's still pouring. And he, being the good member, being the good brother, he says, look, Pastor, listen, I, I, I'll get the car. Just give me the keys. I, I, I'll get the car. And I said, okay. And right there, I got an inspiration. I gave him the keys, but I gave him the wrong key. It's pouring. He's, isn't this funny how we do this? We don't have an umbrella. Nothing to cover us, but we're doing this. Rain is still getting you. He takes off, runs to the car with the wrong key. I gave him, this key had several keys on it, and I gave him the wrong one, and he's trying to open the car. And he's like, and he's like, even doing this. And, and I'm over under <laughs> uh, the area where I can be uh, spared of the rain, I'm cracking up. When finally it dawns on him, pastor's pulling a fast one on me, and he looks over at me. <laughs> finally finds the key, gets in the car. He is drenched. That particular storm lasted way longer than a typical Florida storm. When you have a typical storm, then you figure, well, this is how that storm is going to be. It's just going to be in and out. Sometimes there, there are uncommon storms that come to life. You all will remember in this area what was considered the perfect storm, Hurricane Sandy. And uh, storms like that, they're coming to kind of stay a while. In fact, they come from somewhere. They didn't start outside out here on the Hudson. They came from a distance, even out of the warmer weather of the tropics. And they come here, and uh, the way the winds and the system goes, it just kind of hangs out for a while. It wants to be a visit. It wants to be like those uh, family members that come to your house that you can't get to leave. And, uh, <clears throat> and well, you, we, we don't have family like that. Uh, there, there are some storms in life that are just quick. Lose a job. Two weeks later, you got a better job. But then there are those other storms that seem to have no end where you're like, God, how long will this storm continue? You're praying, you're confessing, you're naming it to claim it, blabbing it to grab it. But it continues storms. These massive storms we know uh, whereas the simple storms are like rainstorms, thunderstorms, these massive ones are like hurricanes, uh, typhoons, cyclones, and in the winter season, blizzards. Y'all pray with me against blizzards this year. Amen. Let's just leave God for no blizzards. Some storms are simply a nuisance, but then there are others that are life-threatening, and such is the case with the text. This storm was big. This storm was serious. 
this storm was such that the boat, the effect of the storm on the waters was causing water to fill the boat. That's something you don't want. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a sailor, but I know that. You don't want the water in the boat. You want the boat to ride on top of the water. Whenever water is coming into the boat, you're in danger. And as the text says, they were in jeopardy. And so these who have been on boats before, these who have sailed these waters before, are now in a place where they are fearful. They are terrified. Let's not look down our nose at these and be so judgmental because you've been in some situations where you've been terrified. You were smiling, but inside you were afraid. You were scared. Some of you are here today, and you've been smiling as best you can in, behind the mask, but you're really troubled. You're really afraid. You're really wondering how in the world is this thing going to work out for you well we've already encouraged you today Jesus will he, he, he will deliver you Jesus will get you through this uh, G Jesus will and here the disciples now are on the disciples of Jesus who 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 had been following Jesus listening to his word being instructed in 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 the things of God seeing things they had never seen before, seeing Jesus heal the sick and, and cast out devils, seeing the miracles that were wrought, hearing the profound words and truths, the revelations that came from his being, they're afraid while Jesus is sleeping. <clears throat> they're afraid, but Jesus is sleeping. Jesus is sleeping while his disciples are afraid. Hmm, get the picture. They're scared. But Jesus, hmm. they're afraid, but Jesus is sleeping. Finally, they're like, what is up? Where is Jesus? Oh, I, last I saw him, he was in the hundred parts. He's, he's, he's sleeping. He's resting. They go to Jesus. He's sleeping so good that the sound of their steps didn't even wake him up. He's sleeping so good, they got to awake him. I imagine they called him Jesus, Yeshua. Maybe somebody shook him a little bit. Jesus, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? King, King James Version says, carest thou not that we're perishing? In other words, Jesus, do you not know what's going on? Jesus, how can you be at sleep, asleep, and here we are in the midst of a storm. We're in jeopardy. Don't you care that we're about to drown? That's how we are sometimes when we're going through. We're talking to the Lord. We're like, Lord, don't you see what's happening? Don't you see what's happening in my life? Don't you see what the doctors see? Don't you, don't you hear what they have said? Don't you see what's going on in our world? Jesus, do you not care that we're about to drown? And Jesus awakes. You know how when you wake up from a deep sleep, sometimes you just got to catch a moment for a second, like, oh, a second. Jesus wakes up, and this is what I imagine. Jesus wakes up and is like, SMH. He gets up. He speaks to the wind. He speaks to the waves. New King James Version said he rebukes the elements, the winds and the, and the waves. Uh, the, 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 the other uh, re record of the, the event says he speaks and says, peace, be still. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's in the boat. The boat is shaking, reeling back and forward. There's water coming into the boat, and his disciples are fearful, and Jesus gets up out of sleep, rebukes the sea and the waves. He says, peace, be still. Remember, they even acknowledged him as master, their rabbi, their teacher. Could it be that Jesus allowed the storm uh, uh, to test them, to develop them, to help them, for whatever he did as the rabbi or teacher was to teach them how that they should deal with the storms of life. 
And so for those of us who read the record, we hear the words of Jesus, peace be still. We, we should know already, even at this point in the message, that uh, uh, if you're in a storm, as long as Jesus is on the boat with you, everything's going to be all right. That if you're in the storm, in order to deal with the storm, you got to do what Jesus did. You got to open up your mouth and you got to speak. And you got to declare like Jesus did, peace, be still. I just believe in this hour that God would have his beloved children to arise to the occasion to be men and women and boys and girls of great faith. We will not be like the disciples shaken in our sandals, but rather we are strong in faith and we acknowledge what Jesus did. We see the power of Jesus on display and we will take that as our example and we will do the same when we encounter the storms of life. See, what God is waiting for many of us to do is simply to open up our mouth and say what he said. Peace, be still. Instead of letting the devil just tear up your home, you need to open up your mouth and say, peace, be still. Instead of just submitting to the doctor's diagnosis, you ought to just open up your mouth by faith and declare, peace, be still. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you don't see how you're going to make it. But instead of allowing the enemy to have you in an anxiety fit, you need to be able to open up your mouth and declare from your heart, peace, be still. I just believe that every storm, like every trial, has an expiration date. Some storms may last long because we let them last long. But God would have us to know there's some things that are within our power that are part of our calling and our assignment that we should open up our mouth and do something about it in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody help me just raise, raise up the proclamation and say, peace, be still. And as with Jesus, you and I can expect that when he said, peace be still, and the wind and the waves obeyed, that we, by the word of the Lord, in our mouth, in our heart and in our mouth, uh, it will also produce results that the enemy has got to stop, that the storm has got to cease. I realize that even when you speak peace, be still, uh, it, it, may, it may not be an immediate manifestation, but you better believe that what you have declared is in fact in process of manifestation, that it is going to happen. Just like when Jesus cursed the fig tree, it didn't look like anything happened that moment, but they came back the next day and it was withered from the roots. You better know that the word of God is alive and powerful and that when you declare it, something is in fact happening. Do I have any witnesses in the house today? Is there anybody that will take the witness stand and say, I know what you're saying, Pastor. I'm a witness of God's power and his word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Jesus then turns his attention to his disciples. I believe that Jesus is turning his attention to you and I today as with the disciples because some of us have been acting like the disciples rather than Jesus. Some of us have been in a super complaining mode. We have been extra anxious. We have been scared. But I believe that what God spoke to the disciples, he's speaking to us today. Help me again. Would you look at your neighbor and say, where is your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Jesus asked them a very important question. Where is your faith? I'm sent today to ask you the same question. Where is your faith? Now, the implication may first appear to be uh, the question of where is your faith as in there is no faith. Where is it? Why don't you have Faith, uh, I, I believe there's, there's more to the question that Jesus asked than this presence. I believe that the question uh, also deals with the location of your faith. 
Some folk have faith, but that faith is misplaced or displaced. Have you ever lost your keys, your car keys? Have you ever lost your cell phone? You still, let's say you're at the house. You, you know the last time you saw it was in a certain place. And you haven't left the house. So it's in the house. You just don't know where it is. So you're looking all over the house when finally you find it in the freezer. How it got there, we don't know. It's misplaced or it's been displaced. I believe that the disciples had some faith, but their faith was misplaced. Their faith was in the storm. Their faith was in the wind. Their faith was in the rain. Their faith was in the water that was filling the boat. They had faith, but their faith was in their inability to control the situation. Their faith then was in themselves when their faith should have instead be, been in the Lord who was there on the boat with them. Could it be that you're being traumatized needlessly because your faith has simply been misplaced? or displaced, your faith is in the government. Your faith is in medical science. Your faith is in the president. Your faith is in your husband or your wife. Your faith is in the bishop or your favorite evangelist. Your faith is in a man. Your faith is in a woman when your faith should be in God. Oh, look at somebody, please, and point at him and say, have faith in God. Here they are. They're afraid. Here they are focusing on the elements and the experience of the storm. They can see the rain. They can feel and hear the wind. They can see the water filling. They know this is not a good look. They know that experience says this is treacherous, that we're in jeopardy, that, that we, are, we, we may be about to die. We're going to drown here at sea. They had their faith in what was going on, the adversity, the opposition, the trouble, the things that we put our faith in, failing to remember, wait a minute, we've got Jesus on the boat with us. He may be asleep, but he's on the boat with us because he's not just man, he's God who never sleeps and never slumbers. What do you know about Jesus? Somebody said it, that's right, he's all right. For a moment there, I believe that they got a little lost. Uh, instead of having faith in God, they had faith in the storm and missed the opportunity to just be at rest, to be at peace like the Lord Jesus. Could it be that when we're going through the storms of life that, 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 that we're giving more credence to, the, credence to the elements, to the things that are happening rather than to, and to, to God, God who controls all things, God who is still on the throne. Have faith in what is faith. Have, have a conviction, have an assurance in God. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is that title deed. It is that, 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 it, 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 it is that assurance, that, that conviction, that knowing. Uh, it is solidarity. It is, it, is, it is the reality of that which God has spoken, which you believe, come what may, it shall come to pass. I, I need you to just talk to yourself and tell yourself, self, have faith in God. Have faith in God. God. They had been traveling with Jesus. They had been seeing his miracles. They had been experiencing the things that he had done. And they would continue to do so as they walked with him. They would see this one who would open up blind eyes and unstop deaf ears, interrupt funeral possessions and raise the dead. They would see the Lord take two fish and five loaves of bread and perform a miracle of multiplication, feeding 5,000 men besides women and children. They saw him doing the impossible. In fact, the first miracle they saw of him is him taking water and turning it into wine. These, these, these are miraculous events that they saw, that they experienced. How is it then that they forgot when they were in the midst of trouble. Again, don't judge them. Consider yourself 
Uh, what you need to do is you need to reflect. You need to, you need to think about the Lord. You need to think about his character, his presence, his person, his power. Uh, uh, well, you, you, you need to be so acquainted with the Lord that when things come up, uh, things that will frighten you in the natural, uh, that, that, that you at the same time will have a peace that endures, that remains settled and, and doesn't, is not moved. It, it, it will not be evicted. It, it will not leave because you have the Prince of Peace, uh, Jesus the Christ abiding on the inside of you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So my encouragement to you today, my challenge to you today is to locate your faith. Is your faith in your storm? Is your faith in the government is your faith in your employee employer or your employees is your faith in money or is your faith in God is your faith in the doctors is your faith in the surgeon or is your faith in God somebody need to holler it out my faith is in Jesus I want to encourage you today that when faith is in the right place that everything is going to work out to the glory of God as it did in the case. They were so amazed by this movement of God that even the winds and the waves would obey him. What manner of man is this? If God brought you to it, it's with a lesson, it's with development in mind that there are some things that need to happen in your life to strengthen your faith, to grow your faith, to help you out. And so I encourage you while you're in the classroom experience right now, get the lesson, learn the lesson because every lesson taught will be a lesson tested and so when it comes to the day of exam you will not falter you will not fail you will not be defeated but though the storm clouds rage and though the waves beat up against your ship as long as Jesus abides on the inside of you as long as you have the living word of God in you in your heart it's going to come out of your mouth and then you're going to declare like Jesus peace be still. And I just believe that we're going to have the very same effect, that what he demonstrated before the disciples will be demonstrated in our lives. So hear me. I told you earlier it was important that you remember what Jesus said, the omniscient one, the all-knowing, all-seeing God knew when he said, let us launch out that a storm was on the horizon. He knows everything. He says, let us launch out. And he says that fully aware of an impending storm and tells them to launch out anyhow. But what he said before they launched out is key to your victory. That is this. Let us cross over to the other side. Can I get somebody to put it in the atmosphere? Come on, repeat the words of Jesus. Let us cross over to the other side oh come on I'm almost finished let us cross over to the other side hear me my brothers and sisters whenever the Lord says let us cross over to the other side Sandy that means we gonna cross over to the other side Whenever God says, let us do something, then you better know that thing is going to be done. Whenever God gives you an assignment, you better know you can't even die till the assignment has been completed. Whenever God speaks a word of prophecy, you better know you're going to live to see it come to pass. Whenever God puts a desire and the, and the power in you to accomplish a thing, you better know that thing is going to be done in Jesus' name. Because when God says, let us cross over, you better know we're going to cross over. In other words, we're going to get over. I'm here to encourage you today that God who led you, who's been leading you and led you to where you are right now, he's not going to leave you hanging. He knew that the storms would come. He knew that the skies would become gray, but he doesn't want you to be afraid. He doesn't want you to be fearful, not for one moment, because if he brought you to it, 
He's going to bring you through it, and you're going to come out victoriously. Do I have a witness in Agape here today? Do I have a witness there online? I'm preaching to somebody to help stimulate your faith, to activate your faith, to put a demand on your faith. You got to learn how to speak like Paul, who also was in the midst of a great storm a great nor'easter and it looked like that ship was going to end in the loss of lives but Paul declares there in Acts 27 uh, he says listen uh, uh, there stood beside me an angel of the Lord uh, whose I am and whom I serve and this angel gave me the word of the Lord and said though that you're in the midst of the storm everything is gonna be alright and I got up this morning to help somebody to tell you everything is gonna be all right I know the doctors may have given you just six months to live but I defy the evil word the report of the doctor and declare you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I shouldn't be the only one to make that proclamation. You need to open up your mouth and speak for yourself. Say like the psalmist with me, I shall not die but live and declare the wonderful works of the Lord. If you said it and you mean it, I dare you to put your hands together and put a praise on it. We defy the odds. We defy the tactics of the enemy and we declare, decree a thing that it may be established that we're going to make it. We're going to get to the other side. We're going to cross over come what may. The devil's been after you. The hellhounds have been intent. Their intent is to stop you. If not to stop you, to stall you. But the devil is a liar. Saints of old would say it over and again Again, the devil is a liar. Can I get the new saints to let it be, let it ring out? Say, Satan, you're a liar. I believe God. That's what Paul declared after giving the word of the Lord. He stood up before the people and he said, I believe God. I say it often. I mean it with everything that's in me. I believe God. Even though the ship is rocking, even though the water's filling the boat, I believe God. Even though the pain continues in my body, I believe God, even though the ones I'm praying for seem to be getting more hellish, getting more out of the will of God. I believe God, even though I believe God about this pandemic and the numbers keep spiking. I believe God. Can I get somebody to help me in this house today and make the same declaration? I want you to shout it out at least three times. I I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Join me standing, please. My time is up. I believe God. I believe God. He's going to do just what he said. Come what may, I believe God. He's going to come through for me. I believe God. I began this journey with Jesus. I believe God. I'm going to make it to the other side. When you read over in Mark's gospel and you see that they did in fact get to the other side and there was on the other side waiting for them a demonized man who needed a mighty deliverance. Could it be that the storm has come to keep you from getting to the other side because of what is needed on the other side? Satan has been trying to stall you. Satan has been trying to stop you because he knows that if you ever get to the other side, you're going to encounter men and women and boys and girls imprisoned living among the dead among the dead people and dead things that God has sent you forth into this world to deliver in the name of the Lord and God would have us to be men and women so intent and so focus that we not give in to the tactics of the enemy it's a setup it's a trick of the enemy 
to get you to live in fear. Be informed, but don't be alarmed. No matter what's going on, no matter what your storm, you are going to make it. You're going to make it. I can believe it, and that's wonderful, but you need to believe it too. Come on, talk to yourself. So I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Come on, share the good news with somebody. Tell them, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Now, be, be a bearer of good news. Tell them, and you're going to make it. Come on, we'll suspend the pointing is rude rule. Come on, you're going to make it. 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 The lyric of the song says, I don't care what you're going through. I know God is going to, he's going to bring you through. You're going to make it. 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 After the storm cloud passes over everything will be alright everything will be alright everything will be is over. Everything, everything will be alright. Come on, do you believe it? Encourage yourself. Here's a song of deliverance. Everything, everything, everything will be alright. Everything means everything. Everything. Come on, encourage yourself. After, After storm cloud passes. But it's gonna be all right. Oh, yeah, after storm cloud passes over. Everything, say it again, everything. Come on, raise your voices, raise your voice. There's like a good 80% of you that I believe got it. And uh, I have to be careful 
not not to be judgmental when when I, when I look at you in the natural, um, but just been doing this as long as I have and getting to understand not only the ways of God but the ways of people. I can tell when some folk are still not there just yet. What I'm sharing with you is not theory. I've lived this. I've experienced it. And there's some things that I'm dealing with in life just like you're dealing with. And this is a practice of mine. I don't just praise God when I come together with you. I have to praise him when you're not around. Um, there are times that I may be alone in my home even in my car, and I just go to praising God. Particularly, I've learned, Dr. O, when the enemy just starts speaking, it's amazing how some folk can hear the enemy's voice more than they can hear the voice of God, or at least that's the one they're listening to. I know that he's just like my mom used to say, mouth almighty, just won't shut up. But know this, the Lord let us in on this, that when he opens his mouth, he's lying. He says, he's a father of lies. There's no truth in him. So since he won't stop shutting up, I figure I just go to talking. And I just go to praising God and blessing God. If I'm at home, I'll go to clapping my hands because I know the Psalm says, clap your hands, oh, you people, and shout to God with the voice of triumph. So I know that that speaks of my victory, my triumph. And I know that it, is, it also reminds the devil of his defeat gives him a terrible headache so he doesn't want you to praise the Lord in advance of your breakthrough or even during your breakthrough or after your breakthrough he knows the power of your praise and he would have you rather to be focused on your trouble I don't feel like praising you don't know what I'm going through everybody's going through something that's what I'm trying to say but take learn some lesson from some seasoned saints okay that praise is your weapon this is how I fight my battles. This is how I go through the storms. I have praised my way out of some things, y'all. Psalm 50 and 23 says that whoever orders their, whoever glorifies God, who gives God's praise, glorifies him. And uh, to those uh, who do so and order their conduct aright, he shows the way of salvation. He shows the way out. And he shows the way in. It's going to be found in you acknowledging the Lord even in the midst of what you're going through. Don't tell me that it's not your personality. Because you hoop and holler and jump up and down. Last night you didn't know what to do, some of you. Because you didn't know if I should jump for the Nets or jump for the Lakers or what have you. I want you to know that it's not up for grabs. Jesus is the champion. He is the winner. And you in Christ are the winner. So by faith, just praise him. Just acknowledge him. Just magnify him. So let's try this one more time, okay? So um, look at your neighbor, please, and just, you don't have to say anything, but just kind of do this. And that means, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's do this together. Let's exalt his name together. Say, we're coming out of this alive. We're coming out of this alive. Safe, sound, and healthy. Hey, maybe I'm coming out of this. I'm getting to the other side. I will not drown in the midst of this sea. I will not die in this storm. And if you believe that, come on, that's it. Raise the praise together. Let everybody, let's get 100%. Not 80%, 100%. Come on, that's it. Come on, come on. Come on, that, let, let every praise be a statement of faith. Where is my faith? I'll tell you where it is. It's in God. My faith is in Jesus. It's not in the storm. It's not in the problem. It's in Jesus. The promise keeper. The problem solver. The savior. The healer. The deliverer. The all-powerful one, El Shaddai, the almighty, almighty God. Oh, blessed be, it's in, blessed be the name of the Lord. It's in my provider. It's in the bread of heaven. It's in water in a thirsty land. My faith is in Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
My faith is in the first and the last. My faith is in he who sits on the throne, God who is in control. My faith is in Jesus.
I take authority over that critical spirit in the name of Jesus. Find you and cast you out. Shall not negatively impact this praise to the God in whom we believe. Somebody's either sitting there or standing there just being so critical of what's happening right now. But let me just help you out a little bit. When you see or hear of the breakthroughs, the miracles, the deliverances of those that you're criticizing now, don't get upset because it could have been you. These just decided, I'm going to believe the word of God. I'm going to have faith in him. And my praise is connected to my faith. So I'm going to praise him in the midst of. I'm going to praise him in spite of. Coming out of this. You're coming out of this. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, just try to steal yourself. You can't steal yourself. Some of you are only moving because the musicians are playing anyhow. But there's that other group that inspires me. I don't need the organ. I don't need the drums. I don't need the horns. I just, I just think about it. I become an instrument. My hands, my feet become a praise. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Because mm -hmm. when I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, I died on Calvary just to set me free. Yeah, I could dance, shout, clap all day and all night. I'm not alone. Praise becomes a pathway for your deliverance, for your blessings. He inhabits the praises of his people. When the praises go up, the blesser comes down. And with the blesser are the blessings. Who wouldn't praise a God like this? your faith. This time with your hands lifted before him. Feel like going on. Everything in me. I'm determined. Armed with this word.
that sounds so so wonderful. Come on, just just one more time. Every heart I feel like oh, there's faith in the room. of your sins, if you haven't received salvation in his name, today is the day. And don't leave this house the same way that you, you came. With every head bowed, and please just, just close your eyes in the presence of the Lord. Sacred moment. I want to invite you who need to be saved to receive Christ today. If you want to receive him, if you want to be saved, if you want to receive his precious gift, I just want you to lift up your right hand as high as you can so I can spot you and uh, I'll pray with you right where you are. Are you in the room? If you're viewing online, just note it there. I, I want to be saved. Perchance I've missed your hand can't see your comment right now but if you need him just cry out to him right where you are and just say save me Lord Jesus faith in him save me Lord Jesus just repent of your sins say I repent of my sins I believe Jesus is Lord and risen from the dead save me Lord Jesus believe it receive it Salvation comes to you today. And if you prayed with me, either in person or you're viewing online to receive salvation, I want you to text AGAPE to 797979. Just let us know. Once you send the text, we'll respond. Then you just reply. Thank you in advance. If you need a church home, AGAPE is a great place to be connected to. Same number, just a different, at least for this final week. New 2021 to 79, 79, 79. You need to be a part of a good church. You'll never find a perfect church. If you do and you go and join it, there goes perfection. We're all imperfect. That's what I'm trying to say. But we serve a perfect Lord. The Lord has been speaking to you about agape. Make your decision today. We need you as much as you need us. Join me on the prayer call this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We won't do our prayer call this week on Friday as this past week. New Year's Eve. We will resume here Wednesday, excuse me, Friday uh, evening at 10 p.m. for our New Year's service. If you're going to attend, please check in and in, in advance, check in to the same number, 797979, and uh, hold your spot and be a part of our New Year's Eve service. If you're not going to be with us in person, by all means, please join us online. Let's uh, pray and praise in the new year. Amen. I love you all so very much. I do want to pray for any who are in the midst today that need a deliverance from the storm, a breakthrough, a healing in your body. Whatever it is, you got a situation that this word has really ministered to you about. Would you just lift up your hand and keep the hand lifted for a moment. If you see a hand near you, just extend your hands in their direction and pray with me for these individuals. Father, storms of life, 
we're all prone to experience storms of life. The outcome is very much determined by our response. And what we've learned today, we say that our faith, we vow that our faith will be in you. Never again in the storm, never again in the situation, never again in the circumstances, never again in people, never again in the enemy, but our faith is in you. And so I thank you, Father, for the breakthrough that you give to these and whatever area of breakthrough is needed, I speak blessing, I speak healing, I speak deliverance, peace and prosperity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Shalom. Peace of the Lord be with you. Here's what I'd like you to do. Please, everybody, pause for a moment. Pause for a moment. Um, if you're in this section to my left, exit that way, please. Give yourself a little distance. Similarly, in this section, that exit, those of you who are in the two center aisles behind you will be the means of exit. Exit. Please save your conversations until you're outside in the open air. Um, and I thank you for your compliance. I appreciate you all so, so very, very much. Those of you who desire to give seed, you obviously know how to do that because you're bringing it forward now. So thank you. May God return to each of you in abundance according to every seed sown. Blessings of the Lord be with you. Um, can y'all get those lights on, up, please? The lights. Blessings, 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 blessings.